Hi everybody, this is Hashtag Just Josh here with another board game review for Unfrontal Gamer. Today we're looking at Quacks of Quidlinburg. This plays 10 and up, 2 to 4 players, and is about 45 plus minutes game. Let's take a look at the game. Okay, the story of the game is that you are all miracle doctors and quack surgeons, and you're showing up in Quidlinburg for this special 9 day extravaganza. Now for these 9 days you're going to have the opportunity at market to sell your potions. And of course you want to make some good money because you're a good quack and you're a good snake oil, sorry, snake oil seller. So you're trying to build up your potion as best as you possibly can to make the most money and get the most victory points. Now let's take a look at the components. You have a game board for each player that has a spiral marking both the money and victory points and possible rubies you might be getting the next day. Uh, on the board you also have um, your ruby. Nice little piece that you can use later for either upgrading uh, your potion, all kinds of other stuff. Comes with a point marker for where you start the base of your potion, a little rat tail marker, and your elixir that has both uh, filled and exhausted. We'll get into some of the components of that later. You also have lots of little pieces that mark your ingredients. Now, there's some basic ingredients, and there are some really advanced ingredients. The, the base ingredients you always start with, some are actually not so good for you to pull. You don't want to pull too many, or else your potion, if you over bake it, blows up in your face. Push your luck. Uh, besides that, you have little pumpkins, you got mandrakes, you got uh, other more advanced pieces that unlock throughout play, and you've got a nice little baggie to hold all your ingredients in, and then you're going to pull from as you play the game. Uh, besides that, you also have your uh, cards that you're going to use to affect the gameplay for each round. You have a game tracker that marks both your points for each player and the day uh, progression as you unlock either other ingredients or special um, effects that then will you know, change the play as of like the ninth round when you play a little bit differently. We'll get to that later. Uh, besides that, you have your markers. Also, I really like this component because not a lot of games come with something to mark when you go all the way around the game board. You actually have a marker for your 50 once you get past 50 points. Pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at a round of play. To begin with, you already have your base pieces marked on your player board in your baggie. So you're going to go through and pull out randomly without looking in your baggie. That is a firm rule. You can never look in here. You have to remember what you have. You're going to play pieces based on the number on the piece. So the one means you move one point ahead of where you started. Let's hope for something bigger here. Cool. I got a two. So instead of going one piece beyond, I'm going to go one, two pieces beyond. And then I'm going to keep going. Problem is, as much as I'm trying to build up a strong potion, if I get too many white pieces, I'm in trouble. Which right now, unfortunately, are adding up for me. If you get more than seven white pieces total by their point value, then your potion overbakes and blows up in your face. At that point, you bust. You must stop. Before then, you may stop anytime you want. Ooh, I got a good ingredient. Okay, I'm still at five. I'm going to push my luck a little bit because there's only one three in here, but there's a bunch of ones, and I don't mind a lot of ones right now. Go figure, I got a one. So I still have a spider in here. I still have two white. I'm going to try and push my luck a little bit. Ha! I'm getting lucky. Uh, do I want to try one more? You know what? I think I'm good there, actually. That's enough pieces that... Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Now, end phase for your turn. Once every player has stopped playing, and every player, or in case is busted, you're then going to start going through your resolution phase. Now, they've given you a convenient uh, marker on the board for that. You actually don't need a player reference. Pretty cool. Uh, the die, that means the highest player who did not bust, player who made it the farthest around their potion spiral, gets to roll this die. So, I would get one free ruby. Cool. It's easy. You can also get victory points, or you can get a free ingredient. Uh, next, you look at the marker here. If there are any players that have the Death Head Moth, you resolve that ability. If there are any players that have a spider, you play that ability. The cool thing about this, there is actually more than one type of resolution for the piece based on uh, how many times you've played the game, if you want to change it up, all kinds of replayability. It's really great. Uh, any, uh, any clouds, any ghost breath? Nope. I have the basic pieces on the board, so nothing to worry about there. Now the ruby. When you're finishing your turn, you look at the next marker beyond the last piece you played. So I played this last, I now look here. There is a ruby on my spot. So that means at the end of this turn, since I stopped there, I get a ruby. Cool. Uh, next up is the question mark, and then the question mark on the green bubble. Now, it's important here to remember, if you busted, you may not get both of these benefits at the end of the turn. You must choose one, and then only get that. So the Although it doesn't really hurt you all that much to bust, late game it definitely will. Early game, I would definitely recommend going for the money. 
Now, the, the little box here, the parchment colored one, that is your victory points. That means I would move, since that is a one, I'd move that one point up on the board. Woohoo, victory points. The next thing you're gonna look at, like I said, is the green bubble. The green bubble is a nine. That means I have nine currency to spend in today's market. Now, early game, not all the ingredients are available. That as you play through the game in the first couple turns, you're actually going to unlock the rest of them. But you are limited by how much currency you have to then buy uh, new ingredients. And these new ingredients may not be duplicates. You may buy one or two ingredients, not the same thing. Uh, you uh, denote currency for each of the parts underneath each of the markers on the uh, little booklet. So a pumpkin would be three, uh, a spider would be four for the one piece, etc. Now for me, since I'm early game, it would be a good idea just to go ahead and grab a pumpkin. And why not? A toadstool. So though, uh, then when I finish the return, I would take all of my pieces, including my new ones, and put them back in my baggie. Go ahead and shuffle that up, and then you're ready for the next turn. Also, at the end of this, you can then resolve to refill your elixir if you use that. That will remove one, um, one white piece off the board if it's the last piece you played. But if you see the bust number, if you went too far when you know, you're going to play that last piece, it is too late. You cannot undo a bust. Just try to prevent one. All you'd have to do is flip that over. At the end of the turn, you may spend two rubies to then flip that back to the you know, non-exhausted side. You may also spend two rubies to move your little water droplet up. That is also really beneficial because that means from then on, instead of starting at zero, you will always start one piece further on your spiral. And you can move that up a number of times throughout the board, both the rubies and both their abilities with your pieces. Okay, turn order continues like that until you get to the last round. Now, I really like this feature. If somebody is really far ahead, let's say blue was at, I don't know, 42 and yellow was back here at 31. Blue could kind of sit there and take the time, maybe draw on a piece or two here and there and watch what yellow does. It's a little bit gamey. Now, that's been removed. In the last round, each player must simultaneously reach into their bag, shuffle, 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 pull out a single piece, and then everyone puts their fist in the middle, closed, and then you reveal all at the same time. If you choose to play a piece, you just simply put that on your board. If you chose that you were actually going to stop there, instead of pulling in, you kind of bluff a little bit, reach in and reveal an empty hand. Once you reveal an empty hand, you are done. You may not jump back in. So if blue decided they were going to play it safer, but yellow really wanted to push their luck a bit, they could go a little further and maybe try and catch up based on how far they can get around that spiral. Blue can't then decide to jump back in once they see yellow got a lot more points. The other component that uh, you can play as an optional um, add-on to the game are these cards. You draw these cards at the beginning of the turn, and either purple plays immediately at the beginning of the turn, or if you have a blue card, that plays at the end of the round. Now, these are effects that are not just going to affect one player. They affect everybody and can ob obviously be very beneficial. Like draw four chips from your bag. You may uh, trade in one of them for a chip of the same color with the next higher value. That means you're going to turn maybe a two into a four. That's a great upgrade. Another benefit you'll notice around the game board is that you have these little rats. These are their little rat tails hang down on the board. As you're playing through the game, you do want to make sure that if you're a little bit behind, you use that, that little perk to help you out. That means that if yellow was, let's say, at 40 and blue at 45, there are one, two, three rat tails. That means that yellow would get three rat tails added in to help push their push a little further along. At the end of the game, once you finish rallying points, you no longer have to worry about the rat tail. Then you just look at whoever has the most points. If somebody was a really big overachiever and they managed to get all the way around the game board, simply take their color and flip it over. That denotes that they've already reached the 50 and are on their lap around for the second time. And then tally up. Once you're done, that's it. Okay, so let's talk about the game a little bit. I was lucky enough to work with North Star at recent Gen Con, my first Gen Con ever. That was awesome. That was a blast. If you have the opportunity, I highly recommend going. It was awesome. The, um, I was given the choice at the end uh, which game I would like for my own copy, and this was my favorite game I played with them, so I did get my own copy. This is my own personal copy, so take that with a grain of salt. I might be a little biased, but it's a lot of fun. I really do like to play in this game. Uh, it has a lot of repay value because the pieces not only have a um, like two books for what type of effect they might have, there's actually a backside to each. Some of the less complicated pieces don't have as much, but there's a lot of, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five. There are five pieces that have two books you know, front and back each. So that gives you lots of versatility, lots of replay value. You can change up the game, all kinds of stuff like that. And depending on what you get with the cards, that can also really add to your experience with the game. Now, there are a couple negatives, I would say. It's not a, there's no such thing as a perfect game. Um, 
honestly, the rat tails, especially late game, they don't help you a whole lot. Once somebody really starts getting away from the rest of the group and leaderboard points, your, the rat, rat tail points aren't going to help you very much. Uh, they're only going to give you four, maybe five at most pushes around the spiral. You're going to need a lot more than that, so you need to build a better bag earlier on. And unfortunately, every now and again, it's small statistics, but you can actually get a really, really bad pull, even one of the last couple rounds, and just get nothing but white your entire pull. At that point, then, your, your entire round is kind of washed at that point. Because you're not likely going to get very far. You're going to want to keep pushing because you know the odds of pulling a better piece are in there. And if you just got the bad luck that time, you're probably going to go until you bust. So you're going to be in the hole a little bit. Um, that said, those negatives aren't that bad. And the statistics aren't that big that you're going to pull that. But that's kind of what, uh, that's kind of what uh, press your luck is. So you're going to get lucky. You're going to get unlucky at times. Uh, the cards will help you a lot with that. The cards can definitely push to balance things a bit and give players a lot of benefit. So players that maybe didn't have a lot of money earlier on, maybe they get an upgrade for one of their chips or maybe they get extra chips free, something like that. They can really help you out. Um, and at times you definitely want to use your elixir because the elixir um, early rounds more so than late. Late you want to depend more on the, the, um, the actual build of your bag, kind of like a deck building game. The early rounds, because you haven't been able to build very much, you're going to use that elixir to undo one of your less lucky pulls for a white piece, then turn it into something better. So there's a lot of benefit early on to help you out, and even late, even if you don't have great luck for a game or two, or a round or two even, then you can actually still get a little bit of help. Overall, obviously, I mean, I, I chose this game as my game I wanted to take home from uh, North Star. It was a lot of fun. I played a lot of rounds of it at uh, Gen Con and saw a lot of different strategies. Some people can get some really strong strategies going. And it's a little frustrating to try and come back from that, but once you play again, change up what a piece does, there goes their strategy. They gotta do something else, then you're all back on the same level playing field. It's that versatile, it's really cool. So overall, I would definitely say, yeah, I, I enjoyed this game quite a bit. A lot of fun. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been another board game review by Unfiltered Gamer. Again, I am hashtag just Josh and hashtag what's Josh drinking. Uh, be sure to check out our website for giveaways and our live stream every 7.30 PST, 7.30 PM. Uh, I'll be there as often as I can. Uh, if you like our content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out everything else we have. And as always, we'll see you next time.